Dudes, what's up? This is Trent, and I am super stoked to bring this one to you. A couple of weeks back, I got my Super Nintendo Classic Mini. Yeah, that's right. I even waited outside of a, of a Target for this. I haven't been up before 6 a.m. in like 15 years. So that's a testament to how committed I am to my Nintendo Classic Gaming. And of course, the first game that I couldn't wait to, to get into was Super Metroid. I haven't played this game in a long, 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 long time. Got me feeling like a little kid again, all inspired and stuff. As you all know, Sketchbook Pro sponsors many of my videos, and I, I ran it by him. I was like, hey, dudes, do you, are you cool with me doing a Metroid piece? Because I also have been, you know, just on a Metroid binge lately with, uh, with Samus Returns on the 3DS. And they were like, heck yeah, man. Uh, jam out some uh, some sweet Metroid, some sweet Samus. I do record just about everything that I do uh, that isn't for top secret projects. <laughs> so uh, so let's do it, man. I want to show you guys uh, the whole po the whole process. This is uh, this is my Super Metroid. Let's do it. Now here's the thing. I I think I might have like a psychological disorder or something, but. It's, it's kind of out of necessity that I'm constantly changing the way that I do everything. And I, you know, for probably the last couple of years, if you follow my channel, you see me do a lot of line art and a lot of this sort of uh, kind of comic booky kind of a style, very, very heavy on the edges and things. And I've kind of like dug into and like teased a sort of a, a transition into a little bit more of a painterly style. But right now I'm just going full bore, man. I am just like throwing out, trying to throw out almost everything that I used to know, because, um, one of the things about being an artist is, uh, you do something and if it's hype at all, if you even have like the slightest, you know, like maybe you get, you know, a couple hundred likes on it or something within about a week, you're going to see about 20 or 30 other artists doing that thing that you did. And so you kind of have to constantly be in a state of evolving and, and trying out new things. And because it's just the nature of what it is, it's always transitioning, always changing. Somebody sees you do a cool trick or something and they're like, Hey, I wonder if I can do that. That's just the nature of what it is. I can't, can't say that's a good thing or a bad thing. Just so like it is what it is, is a constantly evolving life form, especially right now in the digital age. I'm pulling a lot of inspiration from some of my favorite artists here. You can see a little bit of like a Yoji Shinkawa influence. But the biggest thing here that's going on is that I'm kind of reaching for this, like, I guess it's like a slightly more mature look, but it's also just more painterly. It's a little bit less of the... Um, defined edges on things and a little bit more just like gestural painting in light and erasing out uh, things. Actually, there's no real erasing out. It's just a lot of texture brush kind of stuff going on. And as you can see, I'm using all my custom brushes that I like to use. And these are kind of, they're sticking, you know, I, I, I kind of tinkered around with them a little bit and uh, I was changing them. So if you got the set from like three months ago, well, they're almost entirely all new now. You can see where I'm still, I'm digging in even deeper with Sketchbook Pro and I'm starting to find that this is like, this is an epic painting tool, dudes. Like, I think that my initial impression of Sketchbook Pro was that it was really great for beginners, but as I, you know, I'm going into like year two with this software now and I find that I switch this on way more than I switch on Photoshop. A lot of it's because of the symmetry tool and uh, a lot of it's because of the kind of custom brushes that you can make that feel really natural and really painterly. Um, I feel like every step with Sketchbook Pro is kind of bringing me closer to a little bit more of a unique style. And I think that was the big revelation. I mean, I had a big eye-opening experience uh, with this project or with this painting. And uh, also with my Ninja Turtles painting uh, just recently, where I realized that nothing matters except the impact of your image. All that technical painting skill that you could spend a fortune learning in art school, it means nothing if you can't do a painting that says something or has impact. So I, I what I mean by that is that I had, I had done some pieces that I had put probably like 20, 25 hours into um, previously. And those pieces, they, they kind of got a little bit of attention and people like them, but um, that's a lot of time you know, to put into a painting and, and I did enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. I, I get meticulous about details sometimes. Um, and I enjoy that, but 
you know, with, uh, with my, uh, Leonardo painting that I released, uh, that, that, that painting actually, uh, it had, I think three times the number of likes on it. And, uh, and it was passed around and shared a lot more times. Even uh, my buddy Metzen from from Blizzard uh, uh, liked it, and he doesn't. He he never likes my stuff. He never he never gives me the thumbs up. So that was a rare a rare woe factor for me. Impact is more important than technical skill by a long shot, and I never believed that. In fact, I was never told that. But this is where Metroid really had stood out. And let's, let's get back to the meat and potatoes of this whole thing and why Metroid was unique for its time. So this was an era where there wasn't much exploration. Let's talk about Metroid 1, the first one on NES. I recently just played this. And this was one of the first games to have a sense that you were on an alien planet that was much bigger than just these, these limited stages. This was a game that broke the mold, man. This, this game did things that no other game had done. This, this is a game that had impact, and it's an impact that spawned a whole genre of a genre, <laughs> a genre of, of Metroidvanias, they call them, which is essentially just a kind of a game structure, a world structure, whereby you progress based on the abilities that you acquire. And so you're constantly opening up new areas of the map based on what weapons or uh, navigational abilities you have. This was unheard of at the time. At, th at that time, all we had were basically level-based type of structures. There was no going back through areas that you had already completed. There really wasn't a, much of a, uh, many games that had any of that sense of exploration or a sense of, like this, this is a world that exists. This is a world that has an ecosystem and I'm exploring it. There are many ways that Metroid inspired video games, but I spent all of my time talking about my personal art philosophy and the importance of impact. <laughs> so, so let's dig into the dissectional. Uh, I want to actually break down what works and what doesn't work about this piece, things I hate about it, things I like about it, what I picked up from it. So first of all, there's good flow. Um, we've kind of got this, this uh, action-y sort of a pose going on that kind of, uh, it creates an energy that has this kind of a flow going through the whole piece, which when you look at it over the course of like the entire image, um, it kind of gives it this uh, energy of movement. And then with her uh, blaster arm sticking out forward, some circular elements kind of sticking out, you've got this line that, that kind of pulls your eye right back through this flow of her body. And then, um, even, even these elements kind of like pull your eye into this flowing, swirling motion. Uh, so that's one thing. The second thing is, is that we've got a lot of these areas here where I, I've, in some cases, I actually went in with white uh, paint and, and uh, using the same oil brush that I like to use, I would actually kind of paint out uh, to create a sense that there's like this overblown kind of amount of light uh, hitting some of the surfaces. Now this allows me to get away with not really having real realistic lighting, but I can use contrast. Like if something were to be a higher contrast, it would pull your eye more into that location, but I didn't want to lose my color information. So I didn't, I use that very, very sparingly, but it does pull your attention there. Uh, the, the third thing that kind of worked was a lot of the negative space. So we've got a lot of action going on. You remember this line that I had drawn through the whole thing. Let's use a pen that I can actually see. We have this energy line kind of coming through here, and then you'll also notice all, there's a lot of negative space going on over here, which kind of pops your attention to the more high contrast area. A Kind of a mistake that was made was that we've got the most amount of saturation actually uh, over in this area over here on the right side with all this red. And um, that kind of, it's counterintuitive because when you first look at the image, your eye immediately goes to where the color is, the color information. And in that way, I do sort of feel like maybe I could have gone in and just for the sake of really adding some style and uh, attention uh, to the appropriate areas, maybe give more red outline to things or pop her helmet with like a color that doesn't appear anywhere else in the image, like a like a, a yellow or a, uh, a gold and, and maybe even hit it with like a, a glow brush or something like that. 
uh, even even more so if that's like a green, because your eye just you know won't uh, won't get as as much focus on that, and will have more focus on this kind of odd little splotch of something bright and saturated. It kind of creates this conspicuous area of saturation and color. Uh, you know, this could have been actually something that had a little bit of a uh, something like that would have really drawn uh, the viewer's eye, and I may still add something like that in for the for the final. The uh, the thing that I did here with the color, you you've seen this in some of my other videos. So the way to get this uh, this kind of overly saturated uh, red that I've got here was that I had uh, created a selection of of my uh, black. And uh, you can you, you can do it using this. Uh, I'll, I'll just kind of show you. So you make a selection of what color you want to change, and uh, and then you make a copy of that. That's Command C, and then Command V pastes it. So you can see here I've got my own layer up here, and then you can go up here to Image, uh, Adjust, Hue Saturation, and you can you can change that color. And uh, now that's on its it's on its own layer, so you could erase out using like a soft, a soft erase, and that's kind of how I got that uh, that red into the scene. But uh, you gotta you gotta be careful when you're doing something like that because your saturation is going to really pull the viewer's eye to a specific location. You know, depending on what you want them to focus on the most. So that was really kind of all the things that worked and didn't work with the piece. And uh, you know, the more the more time I spend looking at it, the more I want to like fix things, change things, alter things, whatever. But overall, I'm not unhappy with the piece. Dudes, that about does it for me on this particular Super Metroid painting. I want to thank you all for stopping by. If you're hardcore and you'd like to see more real-time videos, since I'm in a constant state of evolving and changing the way that I do things, I really don't mind teaching you everything that I've learned up to this point. Um, and so you can pick up all of my secrets and uh, techniques in my box sets of tutorials over there on my Gumroad channel. I also have my brushes available if you're interested in painting along with me in Sketchbook Pro. If you like my channel or my artwork, I would like to invite you to subscribe. It's okay, go ahead. I'd love it if you stop by more often. If you have some other suggestions for classic Super Nintendo games that you'd love to see me do an illustration for, I'd love to hear your ideas. Drop those in the comments section below the video. Ow, ow. That's it for me for now, but uh, dudes, remember, if you're gonna draw yourself an intergalactic bounty hunter, you draw yourself an intergalactic bounty hunter with some freaking passion now. All right. Boodly doodly doo boo boo doo boo doo 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 doo.